freshman, it's Ms. Matthews. It's time to talk about our final writing assignment, your final essay. But these are really strange and historic times. And in a lot of ways, our current situation is pretty dystopian, a lot like the dystopian novel we just read. So writing a normal essay right now is just, I don't know, a little too normal. So instead, I think you should be writing about these strange and historic times from your point of view and helping your reader understand what the last few months have been like for you. But to give you some focus, and of course to get across my point that literature can help us navigate life, I want you to write this reflective essay through the lens of Fahrenheit 451 and how to break up with your phone. So here's your prompt. Write a personal essay that draws connections between the conflicts in Fahrenheit 451, the ideas and how to break up with your phone, and your experience during this pandemic. You want your reader to understand a few things. You want your reader to understand why Fahrenheit 451 is relevant to real life. You want them to see how the conflict is portrayed in the novel. You want them to understand also how that conflict is relevant to Catherine Price's book, How to Break Up With Your Phone. But you want them to learn about your experience during the phone breakup. You want them to learn about your experience during the pandemic and understand how you see the conflict reflected in all of those situations. So I have an analogy for you and how I want you to approach this essay because it's different than any essays we've written so far. I want you to think of this as a cooking challenge, except nobody's gonna get chopped. You have been given a basket of required ingredients. Those are your Fahrenheit 451 conflicts, how to break up with your phone, and the global pandemic situation. You have to use those and they must be the focus of your dish. But there's also other ingredients you can use. There's a pantry of optional ingredients. Those are the articles and videos that we have read or watched while reading Fahrenheit 451. So in that pantry, you're gonna find the John Green video, what makes you feel more alive. You'll find the what I miss most is swimming article the Marvel Movies article, the Creation, Destruction, and uh, Paradox video. You can use any of those items in the pantry, but you don't have to either. And of course, you're gonna bring your own signature ingredients to the dish too. Those are your annotations and your interpretations, your experience, your reflections, questions you have, things you wonder about, your opinions, your point of view. All of that makes the dish you. Now you have to season the dish. You gotta give it some spice, some herbs and spices. That's things like vivid descriptive language, using some metaphors, using, using similes, choosing interesting words, varying your sentence structure, adding some humor. That will all just add flavor. And of course, presentation matters. So that's things like spelling, punctuation, formatting. Make sure that's on point. Nobody likes a sloppy looking plate. Let me give you a few tips before you start cooking your dish. It's a good idea to start with the conflict. It's going to be the binding agent. It's going to be the thing that holds your dish together. So maybe try out a few different conflicts at first and do a little brainstorming and mind mapping to see which one works best for you. You do want to craft a recipe, but you want to stay creative as well. A personal essay is more like a story. So you want to structure the dish the way that makes sense for you. Decide which, which parts of the meal you want people to eat first and then next. So make a mind map or make an outline so you know ultimately where you want to go, but allow yourself some creativity. Sometimes writing is like thinking aloud and we have to see where it takes us and you might be surprised. Make sure that you choose the best parts of your ingredients to include and highlight. You want to trim down those quotes to the most meaningful phrases and figurative language is always more flavorful. You don't want to skimp on delicious quotes, but don't include parts that don't add to the dish. I don't want the peels or the pits or the stems. Give me the best parts of those quotes and make sure they're well blended into your dish by embedding them smoothly. Any good cook will always taste as they go. You don't want to serve something that you haven't tasted yourself. So make sure that you're reading and rereading constantly as you write. 
make adjustments as you go. Reseason, remix, try different blends of ingredients. Sometimes it's just not right at all and you have to start over from scratch. That's okay, it's all part of the process. And of course, be aware of portions. You don't wanna leave the reader hungry, but you also don't wanna give them more than they can eat in one sitting. So how much is just enough to satisfy the reader and get your ideas across? I am not going to give you a certain number of paragraphs or a certain number of sentences, so you have to decide. Of course, keep in mind this should be an entree, not an appetizer. Give your creation a delicious name, something that makes the reader want to take that first bite. And again, I've said this a couple times, but this creation, this dish is yours and it should represent you, your viewpoint, your experience, and your voice, which means yes, I expect you to use the first person. Okay, every good cooking challenge has a panel of judges. We have to have people who are going to taste your dish. But you're going to choose your own audience for this essay, and you are going to share your work with two people in that audience group. So before you start to write, who are you writing for? Is it other teenagers? Parents? Teachers? School leaders? Politicians? Who is this essay for and what specifically do you want them to learn from listening to your experience through these lenses? Is there something you need them to do or to change? Is there a misperception you need to clear up? And finally, of course, dessert is optional. If you want a little extra challenge, need a little extra something to do, want a little extra credit, you can create an art piece as the dessert for your essay. The piece can take any form you like, and it should reflect and comment on the central conflict that you write about in your essay. Now, if you don't consider yourself an artist or you have no ideas where to start with that, just reach out to me. I can make some suggestions. So here's the schedule. We are dedicating our remaining class time to this writing process which means you need to use our designated blocks to work on your essay. And I'll be available during all of those blocks to work with you wherever you are in the process. Now, I'm spreading this work out intentionally so that you are not stuck writing this at the last moment. But because we're not in the classroom together, I can't really monitor your progress in person. So it's vitally important you keep in touch with me about how this process is going for you. And if I don't hear from you, you will hear from me. The final reflection and the optional art piece are due June 4th at 8 a.m. And you'll submit both through Schoology. So if you're not quite sure where to get started, I can give you a little bit of a template recipe that might be helpful. Remember I said your conflict is sort of the binding agent. It's the thing that's gonna hold the rest of your ingredients and the rest of your dish together. So your conflict should go at the center. And again, try out a couple. Don't just pick one and go for it. Try out a couple, fill in the rest of the template, see which one you have the most to say about, which one you feel the most strongly about. If we zoom in a little bit, you'll see how you wanna talk about each experience and book. Right? And the conflict is drawing together three things, Fahrenheit 451, how to break up with your phone, and the COVID-19 experience. Now next to each of these, I've put some questions that if you answer those questions, it's going to help you kind of figure out what you want to say. Answering those questions will help you fill in that portion of the essay. Why is Fahrenheit important and relevant to real life? You want your reader to understand that first. And then you want to explain how the conflict is portrayed throughout the novel. Where do you see the conflict? And of course, the supporting evidence for that is going to be things that happened in the book, things people say and do, events, ideas, and those should take the form of embedded quotations. And then add some commentary to that. Do you agree with the novel's viewpoint? For how to break up with your phone, First, you want to give your reader a little bit of context. What is the purpose of this book and experience? Why did we do it? And then address the conflict. 
How do you see that conflict, which you already discussed in Fahrenheit, reflected in this book? And what was your experience like reading and doing the breakup? How do you approach the conflict? So the supporting evidence for this part is going to be some ideas and statistics from the breakup, which you can use quotations. You want to embed, you have to, you want to embed quotations, but you're also going to incorporate your experience. So you might go back and look at some of the journal entries. And then finally, for the pandemic experience, you want your reader to understand what this experience has been like for you. The fact that we read this book, that we did the breakup, and then this happened at the same time, you want to talk about that. What was that like for you? And then how is the conflict that you talked about in breakup and in Fahrenheit relevant to this situation as well? Where do you see that? And how do you approach it? Your supporting evidence for this part is mainly going to be your own experience, but you can also incorporate other sources, like I mentioned before, the things in the pantry, but any other articles or videos that you've come across that you think helps support your ideas. Now you want to make sure any other sources you incorporate are valid and that you quote and cite them properly. And then of course the whole thing, a, th a through line throughout, is how these experiences are related. Again, it is sort of a unique coincidence that we read this book, did this breakup, and then had this pandemic happen all at the same time. So we want to make sure that we're always including that relationship between the three things. And then ultimately that big question, what should your reader learn from your experience? Whoever that reader is, what is it you want them to walk away doing thinking or feeling differently. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. This is a really unique experience <laughs> to make your voice heard and to comment on something that is historic and unique. And maybe someday she can read about it and learn a little bit about this time. So thanks freshmen. I'm excited to see what you come up with. I miss you very much. Go Pioneers. Now can I join this? No. <laughs>